for me, my job as a humanist is to serve the intellectual life of society. That's my number one job. If you start with that as a premise, and you look at the tools at your disposal, and you say, well, now I have these digital tools. For me, that's the driving force. It's about the humanities, pure and simple. My interest is in trying to understand the entirety of the ancient world uh, from the perspective of a specialist in language. So I contribute a piece to a larger understanding uh, that depends as well upon the, the archeological and general material record. The great poets and thinkers of the ancient world are the subject of Gregory Crane's research, but he applies a unique approach. A classicist by training, he develops digital data processing methods to gain a deeper understanding of classical texts. The Department of Computer Science at Tufts University in Medford, Boston. This is where the pioneer of the digital humanities works on automatic text recognition and text mining processes. The key to it all was a project Crane and his team launched in 1985, the digitization of all known classical texts, a veritable task of Hercules. What we needed first was a library. Uh, and so this was the, sort of the mindset that ultimately turned into what we call the Perseus Digital Library. Uh, the idea that you wanted to organize the information in a new way first. And so I saw this funding opportunity uh, as uh, a way for us to get support to build a sort of comprehensive library, one that covered every aspect and had every data type about the ancient world in one uh, interconnected space. Today, Perseus Digital Library is a vast open source online library for ancient texts, providing exceptional opportunities for text analysis and translation into many languages. We were able to build a reading environment where you could have an English translation, you could have a Greek text, you could point at a word, say, what is this word, what word is this from, and you could go to the dictionary and read the dictionary entry. And this automated a very slow and tedious loop for reading. Crane is constantly working on new software programs. A tool for morphological analysis is just one of his innovative developments. Ancient Greek poses huge challenges to automatic reading because it contains too many ambiguities in meaning or variations of endings. Crane and his team are discussing new software that translates all the sentences in a text into syntax trees, elucidating the priority of the words and how they refer to one another. By building up these databases, these tree banks, we create now a, a queryable uh, knowledge base upon which we can rebuild and re-examine what we thought we knew about this language. It's like building a genome or a sky survey for ancient languages. It, it is a completely new foundation and we can become much more precise. This is exactly the kind of precision philology has been waiting for. Innumerable Latin scripts written after 500 AD are languishing in the archives, untranslated. But not all students are able to study the original manuscripts. This is another case where software can help out. Students can enlarge digital pages at will, capture the original wording and fill in the missing parts of words until they can complete their own translations, a completely novel form of active involvement. We have an infinite amount of material for all practical purposes where our students can contribute. Uh, and so it's a, it is a new world uh, in the best possible sense, one where there is no there are no moral conflicts about people already being here. It is an empty space that we need to fill. To harvest the fruits of classical philology for cyberspace is the task Gregory Crane is about to address at the University of Leipzig, where the thought leader has become a Humboldt professor appointed to a chair in digital humanities. He also brings along experience of collaborating with Google Books and the Mellon Foundation. I'm very 
I'm extremely pleased that we are getting such an outstanding digital humanities researcher as Gregory Crane, a real figurehead in this field, who will dynamically drive research at the University of Leipzig. Leipzig, the city of books with its great publishing tradition, has always fascinated Gregory Crane. For decades, he was unable to take a look behind the Iron Curtain. But the Alexander von Humboldt professorship means that a dream has now come true. The idea that I would have an opportunity to go to Leipzig and help rebuild what was the greatest scholarly publishing uh, center in the world and to re help to rebuild this uh, in a 21st century context of open access and open data, serving a global audience and advancing a dialogue among civilizations, not just within Europe, but around the entire globe, this for me is a huge opportunity at this stage of my career and one that I could not have imagined and that is a huge honor.